Summary of Coriolanus by William Shakespeare In the early days of the Roman Republic, a famine caused the common people to rise up. Caius Martius, an aristocrat and famous fighter, is seen as the people's biggest enemy because he looks down on them. Menenius Agrippa, an old, respected Roman noble, tries to calm the people down by telling them a story about the belly. Just as the people are starting to cool down, Caius Martius shows up and tells them bluntly what he thinks of them. He then tells them that their wish has come true, Junius Brutus and Sicinius Volutus have been named tribunes of the people. When word comes that the Volscians, including Martius's biggest enemy, General Tullus Aufidius, are attacking Rome, Martius and Roman General Cominius lead the Roman troops against the Volscians. Some troops run away from the battle, but Martius fights bravely and takes the city of Coriolis by himself, even though he can't kill his rival. Caius Martius gets the last name Coriolanus because he did so well in battle. Back in Rome, Coriolanus's father, Meninius, and his mother, Volumnia, start getting ready for his election campaign. Even though the tribunes don't like him, they still want to make him Roman president. They are happy to hear that he has been hurt again, because wounds can be used to show that he is a good leader. Cominius tells the Roman Senate about Coriolanus's brave actions in a powerful speech and officially nominates him for consul. As part of the custom of becoming consul, Coriolanus must ask the people to speak and show them his wounds. Even though his mother, his general, and Meninius try to teach him how to play politics, Coriolanus is very reluctant to do so. Coriolanus asks the people for their voices awkwardly while wearing the standard candidate's row. They think it's strange, but they agree. Once Coriolanus is done, though, it's easy for the tribunes to get the people to change their minds by telling them how much Coriolanus hates them. When the tribunes tell Coriolanus that the people have changed their minds, he gets angry and accuses the people of being changeable. He also sticks to his opinion that the people should have no power. The tribunes think this is treason, so they get a group of people together to kill Coriolanus. In the end, the tribunes agree to hold a public trial for Coriolanus. During the trial, Coriolanus's friends tell him to stay calm and gentle. Coriolanus doesn't want to hide how he really feels about the people. He tries to hide it at first, but the tribunes are able to make him angry right away, so he curses the people in public once more. The tribunes see this reaction as more proof that he is an enemy of the people, so they send him away. After being kicked out, Coriolanus goes looking for his enemy, Aufidius. Coriolanus tells Aufidius in Antium that he wants to get even with Rome and asks if he can join the Volscians. Aufidius and the Volscian lords agree, and the Volscian troops start to love Coriolanus right away. Aufidius, on the other hand, has a secret plan to turn against Coriolanus once the Volscians have taken Rome. They successfully led a military operation all the way to the gates of Rome. There, Cominius and Meninius try to stop Coriolanus from fighting his own city by going to the Volscian camp, but they are not successful. Coriolanus's mother, Volumnia, his wife, Virgilia, their son, young Martius, and their close friend, Valeria, meet him outside the city in a last-ditch effort to save Rome. By talking about how close they are as family, Volumnia is able to convince Coriolanus to give up the military mission, even though he knows that doing so could cost him his life. Volumnia goes back to Rome as a hero, and Coriolanus goes back to the Volscians, hoping they will accept peace between the two states. Coriolanus gives the Volscian lords an official peace treaty in the city of Coriolis. Aufidius and his Volscian conspirators, on the other hand, tell the lords not to accept the deal and call Caius Martius a traitor to the Volscian state. Coriolanus gets angry, and Aufidius turns the Volscian people against him by telling them that he killed their families. At the urging of the lords of Volscia, Aufidius and his accomplices kill Coriolanus. About the author Shakespeare is probably the most well-known writer in history, but we still don't know a lot about his life. His father was a glove maker, and when he was young, Shakespeare only went to great school. He married in Hathaway in 1582, but he left his family around 1590 to become an actor and writer in London. Shakespeare was an instant hit. 
He quickly became the most famous writer of his time and a part owner of the Globe Theatre. In 1603, King James gave his theatre group the name The King's Men. Shakespeare moved to Stratford-upon-Avon in 1613, when he was wealthy and well-known. He died three years later. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.